Welcome to Teachable Moments. This is the first part of a four-part series on spiders. Many people don't like spiders because they're afraid of them or don't understand them. Spiders play an important part in a healthy ecosystem. They're fascinating creatures when you get to know them. In this lesson, we'll learn how to distinguish a spider from an insect, learn the two dangerous spiders in the U.S., and learn about the different types of spider webs. I'm going to talk about this spider. This is a golden orb web spider. This is a young one. She hasn't gotten very big yet. Um, a lot of people don't like spiders because they don't understand them or they're afraid of them, but spiders are really interesting animals. The Native Americans often had a spirit animal that would they would use to guide them and give them advice of how, how to act and how to live. A lot of times they wanted something powerful like a bear or a wolf. One man decided the spider was going to be his spirit animal. His friends made fun of him. Why would you want to have a spider? All they do is just sit around all day. They don't do anything. They don't go out and kill other animals for their food. And he said, if, you're, if, if you can be like the spider and be patient and just wait, a lot of times your food will come to you. So that's a good lesson in life that we need to slow down and take advantage of what comes to us. As an environmental educator, I'm often asked, how do you tell the difference between a spider and an insect? It's very easy. Insects always have three body parts and six legs. They may or may not have wings. The head of an insect has compound eyes, as you can see on this rubber fly here. The head also has the mouth, and there's diff four different types of mouths, which I'm not going to get into in this video. The head can also have antennae. Spiders never have antennae. Insects go through what we call metamorphosis. So they start out as an egg, and depending on if they go through complete or incomplete metamorphosis, they will become a larva, a pupa, and then an adult. Or, in the case of incomplete, they will be a nymph and then become an adult. Insects can be plant eaters or meat eaters. Some of them are only able to eat liquids like blood or sap from plants. Spiders are arachnids. They only have two body parts and eight legs. The body parts are the cephalothorax and the abdomen. Spiders have six to eight simple eyes. They have pedipalps in the front, venom glands, and fangs. The eight legs are attached to the cephalothorax. The abdomen contains the digestive tract, the heart, book lungs, respiratory trachea, reproductive organs, and silk glands. Silk is released through the spinnerets. There are six of them. No metamorphosis takes place in spiders. They lay eggs and have spiderlings that hatch directly from them. Only two dangerously venomous spiders in the U.S., the black widow and the brown recluse. Fortunately, both are very easy to identify. Female black widow is shiny and black with a large abdomen the lower part of the abdomen has the famous red hourglass. The female's bite can be very painful, but it's not usually fatal in adults. Bites in small children can be serious and medical treatment should be sought. The venom is a neurotoxin. The brown recluse spider has a distinctive dark brown violin pattern on the cephalothorax. Brown recluses live up to their name by hiding in dark areas, unfortunately, where people can come in contact with them, such as in garage, closets, and yikes, even in shoes or garden gloves. For more information about the brown recluse and the black widow, consult a medical website or book.
Orb weaver spiders construct the flat circular webs that we often see around landscaping or strung between trees, fences, and even power lines. Spiders can control how sticky the web strands are depending on which abdominal glands they use. The radius threads are not as sticky. These are the support lines the spider walks on or runs on. The spiral threads are sticky with tiny droplets of what I call spider glue. These are the threads that entrap the prey. The tiny droplets are made up of highly entangled polymers. This female golden orb web spider is attaching a strand of silk to a radius thread. You can see the silk coming out of her spinneret. Garden spiders and their kin make zigzag patterns in the center of their web. It's not known whether it's to prevent birds from hitting the web or if it is to attract prey. These spiders are often called writing spiders. These are the lovely spiders that were the inspiration for the book Charlotte's Web. I've had kids tell me in my classes, if they write your name in the web, that means you're going to die. I said, well, if they write your name, it's going to have to be Z, 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 because that's the only letter that they can make. Threats produce various types of silk used for different purposes. When capturing prey, the spiders spin a wide band of silk to wrap and immobilize its prey. Watch this spider get ready to feast on her prey. Check out the fangs on this gal. She will inject venom to liquefy the innards of this beetle. Later, she will come back and drink the beetle juice. We've got some spidey action going on here. The spider has found this crane fly and she's biting it. What she'll do is uh, inject her venom in there and it actually liquefies the inside of that insect. This is a crane fly. And then she'll come back and uh, drink the juices out of it. The center of this little orb weaver's web is only about the size of a dime. It's very, very tiny. Cup and saucer webs are often found on shrubbery. This one I saw at my mother's house down in Florida. The cup and saucer webs are sometimes also called bowl and doily spider webs. The spider makes two types of webs. The upper one is the cup or the bowl, and she lives underneath that. Below that is the doily or the saucer. Grass spiders build sheet webs in the grass. They're easy to spot on a morning when they're covered with dew. One of my favorite types of webs is that of the lampshade spider. These spiders are found on the underside of rock overhangs where they are protected from the elements. The spider spins a 3D web that is attached to the rock. As you can see in this photo, the web is as wide as the spider's leg span. If an insect touches the web, her sensitive legs will detect movement and she will quickly enjoy a meal. If you look closely, you'll be able to see the spider on the rocks. She's in the middle of the web. You can see how this is called a lampshade because it's three-dimensional and it's round. Most of us are familiar with the cobwebs. They're often found in our house. House spiders, black widows, and others build these messy, unorganized cobwebs. Sometimes cobwebs can be really messy. This light fixture that was near our marina in Oak Ridge was completely covered with spider webs. Several years ago, a friend of mine told me she had a black widow at her house, and so I asked her to catch it for me because I wanted to get a picture of it. We ended up making an outdoor pet out of her. We ended up naming her Arachne very original name for a spider, but my husband is very good at catching flies with his bare hand, and so he 
would catch these flies and throw them into the container that we had arachne in. We came back from vacation. We were gone for a couple of weeks. When we came back, and I noticed she had egg cases in there. So here you can see this large yellow object is an egg case. I went ahead and let it hatch because I wanted to see how many babies she had in there. There was about 250. So we took it way out into the woods in a place that nobody would come in contact with them and, and released them. It was fascinating to watch her catch her prey and bite them and immobilize them. Not all spiders build webs. The next spiders we're going to see are hunting spiders. Some of them you'll notice have very large eyes. Others are ambush predators. Jumping spiders are one of my favorite spiders. They're so cute. I love their big eyes. Those two big eyes in the front are used for hunting. And they have the six smaller eyes along the sides just to kind of let them see what's going on around them. This gal is quite a successful hunter. Check out the size of those big green eyes. You're going to see in an upcoming episode what she can do with those eyes. It's pretty strange. A lot of these spiders will have a drag line that they use to catch themselves if they fall off of the leaf or if they have to jump too far and miss. I thought it was odd when I saw the petals of this daisy sticking up like this. And when I looked closer, I noticed that there was somebody inside. There's a little crab spider that is waiting for prey to come visit. Flowers are beautiful, but sometimes they can have a nasty surprise, just like this crab spider that was waiting for a pollinator to come down and visit the plant that would never leave it would become a meal. So this is the end of this episode of Teachable Moments. I will have three more coming up in the future. You'll get to learn a lot more about spiders and interesting facts about them. So I hope you'll come back and visit me again. For more information on nature, visit my website, easttennesseewildflowers.com.